I just spent the entire night benchmarking for you guys. So uh, please excuse me. Now you're probably wondering, what did you just benchmark the entire night, Wolfie? Well, AMD just released a new version of their driver software. For a while, it was just called Radeon Software, but now its name has actually been changed back to the Adrenaline Software. Now, with the name changed back, they did make a couple of tweaks and overhauls. The big thing that they added, though, is RSR, or Radeon Super Resolution. Now, RSR is interesting for a couple of reasons, actually, because I've been technically doing it for a while now. It, on Linux, you can force FSR support, which is, RSR technically is an implementation of FSR. This time, it's now in the drivers, like, like I actually said that they should do. The thing is, though, it's not exactly perfect because its implementation, while better than some implementations that I've tested, is less compatible than one that I also am going to be talking about in this video. So let's dig a little bit deeper right after our intro. Today we're going to be testing RSR, FSR, CAS, and lossless scaling FSR. Now, lossless scaling FSR is the one that I think requires the most explanation. That is a tool that I've actually downloaded off of Steam that looks a little bit like this. And the tool is relatively cheap. It's only a couple bucks, but it allows you to use NIS and FSR, which is NVIDIA Integer Scaling and Fidelity FX Super Resolution without having to have in-game compatibility or support. And it just kind of forces it. That being said though, lossless scaling was not created with this in mind originally. It was added to the software later, but the original use is actually for integer scaling for old retro games and pixel art games. So yeah, if, that, if you're into that space, I would check that out actually. It is a way for us to kind of force FSR and RSR technically in games that it doesn't support it because there are a few games that it doesn't work in and we'll we'll talk about those as well. Which then brings us to the topic of quality. Why would I pick RSR, FSR, CAS or even uh LS FSR is what we're going to call it. Well, they're actually kind of in a bit of a hierarchy with the normal rendering typically being the best results. FSR coming in close behind it. CAS coming in right behind that. RSR behind that. And LS FSR behind that. Now, CAS is the weirdest outlier because this is an AMD technology, but it also doesn't look that great and does, isn't implemented in very many games. So it's probably why it's not implemented in very many games. But from what I understand, it's easier to implement than FSR, which is already easy to implement. And RSR kind of makes CAS probably a moot point. We only have one game with a data point on that. So uh, it's kind of just a thing, it's there. But we're gonna be testing all of these implementations off of their performance metrics. So we're gonna be kind of rating them more off of the FPS gained and not necessarily the image quality. But just take into consideration this hierarchy when referencing these numbers. You can get these FPS at a quality dip in each level. The thing that I do want to point out is that these bottom two, RSR and LSFSR, are almost identical in most cases. The difference is marginal between them. And CAS, as I said, only has a single data point. So really, let's just move it off the chart, except in the one game that we used it. So our breakdown looks more like this. And to talk about our test system, it's actually the one right behind me, right over here. Supernova, my fully liquid cooled system with a Ryzen 9 3900X, uh, 32 gigs of Trident Z 3000 speed memory, and a Radeon 5700 XT, also under liquid, and it's overclocked to this number. Yeah, that's a heavy overclock. <laughs> I didn't do this, AMD did this, blame them. But the performance of this GPU is, well, as I've discussed prior in the 3060 review that I did, it is better than the 3060, but only in some cases and only in some games. But with this feature, every single time 
it's pretty damn competitive, even with the modern GPUs. And it does lower that VRAM usage ever so slightly, which is starting to become a problem. And that will be fixed, of course, with more VRAM at some point. Now, before we actually get into it, I do want to give you a sample of what each of them actually looks like in PSO2. Why this game? Well, because this actually has support for everything except for CAS, which we already kind of omitted from not being really used all that much. So uh, let's go ahead and put that on the screen. This is the default renderer, and it looks pretty good. You can see detail in the atmospheric fog. A lot of effects work really, really well. Overall, it just, it looks great. Granted, the frame rates can be a little challenging at the maximum preset with this game. I mean, out in this open field, it looks beautiful, but it is challenging to run, particularly in the early stages of your gameplay for the day, as all of the shaders have to compile first. Switching over to FSR, this is the FSR Ultra Quality Preset, which we're going to be using for all of these. We can actually slide this down a little bit more if we want more frames per second. And if you guys want me to take a look at the difference between all of those, please let me know in the comments. But at the Ultra Quality, it actually looks really good. In fact, this is how I play the game most of the time. Some effects do get softened, or well, sharpened if you will, such as distant atmospheric fog and blur tends to actually get sharpened a little bit. This is not, too troubling for me, and I personally don't dislike it still. And things like particle effects still seem to work well. Moving on to RSR, it gets a little bit, yeah. We're starting to see things like artifacting, some shimmer effects just don't want to work at all anymore, but it's still very playable, and I have played this game in a very similar configuration, which is LS FSR. Now, on this configuration, it's very similar, frame rates are very similar, and again, the same issues. There is some blurriness though in some weird places, and I wonder if that's just an implementation of their aliasing, and maybe some additional sharpening on the sharpening slider might help with that. But that's what they all look like, so you have a bit of a frame of reference, and realistically, you might not even be able to tell the difference due to YouTube's compression algorithms. They, they might actually just and you won't be able to see anything. Granted, the easiest way to test it yourself is, well, try it since all of them except for lossless scaling are free with an AMD card. Granted, you can use FSR on a NVIDIA card. We do have a video on that coming up on using FSR versus DLSS on NVIDIA hardware. Uh, I don't think NVIDIA is gonna like that one though. So yeah, that's coming up soon. Without further ado though, let's get into numbers. Let's start with The Witcher 3, which uh, by the way, um, I'm assuming it's because of the Steam Deck, but Hairworks is fixed. And we actually got some of our best AMD performance I've ever seen in this game. I'm not even joking. So uh, our default numbers were 80, 80 FPS with Hairworks on. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know how it got fixed, but good job CD Projekt Red. If we go ahead and turn on RSR, since we don't have FSR support, we get 103 frames per second. And if we turn on LS FSR, we get about 102, meaning that these two are pretty much in parity and within a margin of error. Cyberpunk 2077 is up next. This game actually does have FSR support, so yeah, not bad. Uh, we got 30 frames per second maxed out, not great on the default. Uh, with FSR enabled, we got it up to 45 frames per second, making it a little bit more playable. If we turn on RSR, we got 75 frames per second, which is actually really good. And lossless scaling FSR, we got 70 frames per second. Again, pretty much within a margin of error of each other. Either way, this seems to be the best way to play this game. While quality does take a bit of a dip, it is playable with the maximum settings. Granted, I would actually recommend using FSR and lowering the preset to high instead of the maximum, and you'll end up with a much more playable game that way. Up next, we got The Outer Worlds, a game that uh, really doesn't like the video cards, I found out. Maxed out, we actually got 70 frames per second on our native bare metal rendering. RSR took us all the way up to 102, and with LS FSR, 100 frames per second. Again, gonna say this a lot, within parity of each other. Doom Eternal is a game that just runs well in general, and while we can run it bare metal at 165 frames per second, turning on both RSR and LSFSR, we get over 200 frames per second in both cases, which is, again, pretty awesome. Granted, not needed in most cases, because 
you have to have a monitor that can display 200 frames per second before you even consider having me use this. PSO2 No Genesis is another game that we did test heavily. This one actually has a lot of implementations, including DLSS, which uh, is gonna be one of the games that we're gonna use in that DLSS versus FSR video. But uh, so for New Genesis, we get 60 frames per second on max. With FSR enabled, it goes up to 80 frames per second. Very, very playable. Now, interestingly enough, this is the only time this has happened so far, but with RSR and LSFSR, we actually drop down to 75 frames per second, which is in a margin of error of those 80 frames per second, but it is the only time that the numbers have actually been this close so far. Devil May Cry 5 is an interesting one because it plays at 160 frames per second on AMD cards and specifically on my 5700 XT. With RSR enabled, we actually had a glitch where the game tries to switch to HDR and it can't and it just looks so bad. <laughs> it ended up being uh, not great, but uh, that took us to a 250 frames per second. Granted, a better solution would be the lossless scaling FSR, which actually took us up to the same frame rate and didn't have that issue. Now, I did try to test a couple of games to see if maybe you can get a little bit better performance in them, like PC Builder Simulator, which has a sequel coming out soon. Now, unfortunately, it appears that 145 frames per second might be max for this, or it might have some sort of implementation that locks it to the frame rate of the monitor. I couldn't find a way to turn it off, so really wasn't much of a way to do it. ESO, as we found out, actually maxes out at 100 frames per second, and uh, all of a sudden the 5700 XT can run that, so I'm assuming there was an update that just made it possible and a bit more stable uh, as it was when we used the 3060. New to us, it's Forza Horizon 5, and uh, yeah, this one's gonna be... This one's a little bit weird because it... it it seems that it has a bit of a dynamic resolution scaler that doesn't turn off. We got pretty much the same result on maximum testing between the default RSR and LSFSR being 60, 75, and 75 respectively. We did gain 15 frames per second, but it's not really all that significant and wasn't great. Halo Infinite is another one that has a weird sort of display setting. It doesn't really have detailed things such as doing full screen. It's always borderless window, which is really weird, which prevents RSR from actually running. But you could run this game with LSFSR, which gets you more frames per second. It brings you up to around 90 frames per second on average, which is great because it seems that the game tries to run around 75 frames per second regularly. Godfall is up next, and this is the only game that actually had CAS support built into it that we tested. At maximum settings, we got around 90 frames per second, which for this game is surprisingly high and incredibly AMD favorable compared to NVIDIA. With FSR support, we got it up to 130. With CRSR, again, 130. CAS took us down to 95. And with lossless scaling FSR, which is, this is a weird one, and again, a bit of an outlier, we got 200 frames per second. Don't know why this is the only one that did that, but it is. And then finally, we have Borderlands 3, which doesn't have RSR, it doesn't have FSR, even though for some reason the Radeon software thinks that it does, but we can use the lossless scaling FSR, and this is kind of to prove that there are some games where lossless scaling FSR is needed. This is also a weird situation where in the Radeon software, you cannot enable RSR. It's the only game in the software that had that stipulation. And I do wonder if that's because there was that crashing issue with that game and AMD had to make some settings like custom to it. And I wonder if it's just not been added back to it yet. But with that, we did get 95 frames per second as opposed to the default bare metal where we got 60 frames per second, making it a bit more playable. And actually I do prefer to play it this way because Borderlands goes really well with LS FSR. And I think that actual FSR implementation, if coming to that game, would be, it'd be amazing. Like this is the kind of game that will really yield well to that kind of technology. Now looking at the big game breakdown, we can actually see that most of our games do see a benefit to using RSR, FSR, and LSFSR. LSFSR and RSR tend to be exactly the same, which 
is kind of important because they are more or less the same implementation. The difference is how they work though. Lossless scaling FSR requires you to set the game to windowed mode and then it scales it manually using a hotkey. RSR only works if the game is set to a lower resolution and then set to full screen, which means that any game that has full screen should technically work, but we ran into a couple. PC Building Simulator was one of them. Borderlands 3 was another one where the implementation just didn't work either through resolution scalers or through weird settings. Halo Infinite is also notable because it has a dynamic resolution scaler that cannot be turned off. I mean, the game looks great. The implementation looks great. And for PC gaming is one of the easiest games to configure, but it does not really work very well for testing purposes because I can't really, you know, dig deep into it. Overall though, if I had to choose between any of these to actually turn on to boost my frame rate, it would actually have to be FSR. And with FSR 2.0 coming around, that's only gonna start to look better. Now I do have a theory that FSR 2.0 is going to hit your frame rates harder than FSR 1.0, but as long as games implement it in a way that we can select them, or uh, as I said, RSR is always an option, we could see games that look and feel amazing and it is free performance and it's really a preference thing at this point do you like this or this i can't make that decision for you that has to be something that you have to test yourself but overall it is an improvement on amd's gpus and it will help actually make some gpus last just a little bit longer my 5700 XT was looking like it was not holding up very well, and it's still having some issues with VRAM uh, being that it might just not have enough, but I have a new one coming soon, a 6700 XT, but you guys already know about that. As a function, yes, I would recommend this. I personally love it. I think it works well, and knowing how the performance actually stacks up, I'm curious to know what you guys would actually use. Would you use RSR, FSR, LSFSR, or the CAS? <laughs> Granted, as I said, that last one is just, there was like no data points on it. So there's really not much we can actually include with it. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave it a like, comment, subscribe. I legitimately stayed up till five in the morning getting like all the data points together for this. But uh, that's where I'm gonna leave you guys. So thank you again. Wolfie, out.